In our last couple of episodes, we learned about Newton's first and second laws of motion. The first law taught us that objects actually don't like change. So if an object is moving, it's going to keep moving. If it's stationary, it's going to stay stationary. Unless an outside force comes along and forces it to change. The second law taught us that the greater the force you apply on an object, the faster it will accelerate. And the greater the mass of the object, the slower it will accelerate. In today's episode, we're going to learn about Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion is probably the most well-known of the three. It states that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Some examples include pulling on a rubber band, bouncing a ball, and compressing a spring. In the case of the spring, you know that the harder you squeeze it, the harder it pushes back. Now let's consider something far more complex, a rocket. Most people assume that a rocket moves by pushing itself off the ground. But that's not how it works. Not really. Think about it. In space, there's no ground or air for the rocket to push itself off of. But it still moves. In fact, it moves even better in space, where there's no friction. So, it's not the ground or the air pushing back against the rocket that makes it move. A rocket burns fuel and releases hot gases from the nozzle at super high velocity. As the rocket pushes the gas in one direction, the gas pushes the rocket in the opposite direction. This is called thrust, Newton's third law in action. And that's also why it's impossible to build an electric powered rocket. But you might ask, if the forces are opposite and equal, why are the gases moving faster than the rocket? Well, that's because of the second law. Remember, the greater the mass, the slower the acceleration. And the mass of a rocket, like Falcon Heavy, is 1,420 tons. Now here's a simple project we can do to demonstrate this concept. And no, it's not actually a rocket, but it demonstrates the same principle without any of the mess. We'll need an empty water bottle, four bottle caps, plastic straws, bamboo skewers, hot glue, or some tape, and a balloon. Today, we're going to make an air part car. For that, we're going to need a pair of axles with wheels on the ends. We could build them from scratch, of course, but since I already have a pair from the last project, I'm just going to reuse them. To see how I made these, you can click on the link to check out my previous video. After you've made your axles, attach them to the water bottle like this. Then, insert a plastic straw in the mouth of the balloon and tape it shut. Finally, attach the balloon to the bottle with some tape. Now let's test it out. Set your car on the floor and let it go. As the balloon forces the air through the back, the escaping air pushes the car forward opposite and equal reaction. Of course, I could have demonstrated that idea with just a balloon. But what fun would that be? As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. That's it for our lesson today. Catch you later.